In this video, I'm going to talk about Hodgkin lymphoma. And uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is basically a malignant transformation of uh, the white blood cell into ab an abnormal cell. So before we uh, can actually get into any of the symptoms and all that, first let's try to explain what's actually happening. And to do that, we need to first talk a little bit about blood because we're going to concentrate on a specific type of blood cell called a B cell. A B cell. Now blood is broken up into cells and plasma and the three big blood cells are red blood cells, RBCs, white blood cells, and platelets. Now the white blood cell is really at the heart of uh, this uh, discussion because white blood cells uh, break down further into many different types and uh, the point of this video is not to talk about the different types of white blood cells. It's to top, talk about one type of white blood cell called a lymphocyte. Now that's not to be confused with leukocytes, which is what white blood cells are often referred to, leuco uh, meaning white. But one type of white blood cell is a lymphocyte. There's other types, you know, monocytes for example, and so on and so forth. These lymphocytes are what we're talking about and there's two types. There's B lymphocytes and there's T lymphocytes. Hodgkin's lymphoma is concerned with the B lymphocyte and it is the malignant proliferation of the B lymphocyte that is at the heart of this uh, disorder. And what happens is this B lymphocyte transforms into an abnormal type of cell and that is really the the key uh, to de detecting this uh, type of uh, cancer. So uh, let's just keep this, we won't erase it just just yet. So why is that important? Well, why is that important is because when you have these B cells that I just talked about, when they are functioning normal, so I'll put the word normal, normal B cells in the body are very important because they produce something called antibodies. And antibodies are, as most of you probably know, very important in fighting infection they fight infection in our body and they're essentially part of our immune system they live lymphocytes live in lymph tissue now this is very important because this is the part of the body that uh, we're going to be concerned with now where is lymph tissue in your body does anybody know well lymph tissue exists in a lot of places um, quite a few places in fact uh, I'm just going to mention three of the most important places. Uh, I'm going to mention the spleen, I'm going to mention the bone marrow, and I'm going to mention the lymph nodes. So when you have Hodgkin's, these are the parts of the body that can be affected. So what's happening in Hodgkin's disease? Well this B cell has now undergone a malignant transformation transformation into an abnormal type of B cell and that abnormal type of B cell or B lymphocyte is given a special name and that special name is a Reed Sternberg cell and that is the diagnostic uh, uh, or pathognomic um, finding actually on the biopsy I'm going to actually, because it's so important, even uh, attempt to draw a, a very basic uh, diagram. The and like I said, this is a very very simplistic way of drawing this. But if this is a normal B cell, the Reed Sternberg cells, the main uh, difference is that they're much larger, and inside they have two nucleuses. So they're often referred to as large binucleate cells. And of course, the 
the name that was assigned to them, assuming the people who discovered this, is the Reed Sternberg cell or Reed Sternberg cells. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, before I get into symptoms, I'd like to state why does this happen? What is the reason this could happen in a person? Well, the cause uh, of this um, involves genetics and environment. So it, it can be because of uh, genetic uh, susceptibility or an environmental um, um, exposure. And some of the examples are certain occupations, uh, such as working with wood, uh, a history of uh, a, uh, uh, infection uh, with uh, a certain virus called Epstein-Barr, Epstein-Barr virus. Um, another reason this can happen is other infections like uh, tuberculosis, uh, herpes, herpes virus, um, and um, certain medications uh, have uh, associated with this also like phenytoin. So these are some of the risk factors involved, you know, some of the causative facts, factors. So what are some of the symptoms and signs? Well, there's a classic uh, uh, almost a trivia question which is what are the B symptoms of this lymphoma and I, I really I'm not sure why they call it B symptoms the only thing I can think of is perhaps there was a uh, an A symptom of some other type and this is the B symptoms or maybe because uh, a Hodgkin's lymphoma involves the B cells but in any case, this was asked uh, on licensing exams, and the B symptoms of lymphoma are fever, night sweats, and weight loss. Uh, there are, of course, other symptoms uh, as well. Uh, there's um, lymphadenopathy or, or a swollen lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy, or swollen lymph nodes. I, I guess that's the layman's way of describing it. Um, uh, the lymphadenopathy, however, is actually uh, quite unique in that it's uh, painless. And I think that's very important to remember uh, because painful lymphadenopathy um, is associated with other types of disorders. And um, another uh, uh, physical exam finding would be, as I had mentioned earlier, that uh, this is a uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma involves B cells. Uh, and the B cells are part of the lymphoid tissue and lymphoid tissue can be found in the spleen so if that is the case uh, where the spleen is involved the spleen will be enlarged so you'll have splenomegaly uh, which essentially just means an enlargement of the spleen and if the Hodgkin's lymphoma involves the bone marrow then the bone will be infected uh, in uh, affected sorry the bone will be affected we will have bony lesions and you might even have some fractures Okay, so I, ho I hope it, it isn't uh, simply memorization. I hope there's a understanding involved here of why this is all happening. Um, so we will move on now to the diagnosis. It's a tough diagnosis uh, because the symptoms, nothing really screams out Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, there, as you can probably imagine, the, the, the symptoms are actually very general, you know, fever, sweats, it doesn't really, it's not a very uh, specific, and you could have fever and night sweats with many things, tuberculosis for example. Um, so the diagnosis is a tough one, but what they originally do is some sort of imaging. A physician who sees a patient with these types of symptoms will do some sort of imaging to localize the problem. And the most common types of imaging include chest x-rays and or CTs of uh, the chest and abdomen. And when those tests are done, what you're really looking for is some sort of finding 
that will lead you to the test that will definitely give you a diagnosis. So what you're trying to find is something that you can biopsy. Well, what is that thing that you're trying to biopsy? Lymph node. So really, Hodgkin's lymphoma is suspected in patients that have, let's say, the symptoms that I described uh, before. And you do these routine imaging tests, and you're trying to localize uh, a lymph node that is enlarged that you can biopsy. And that is really the key. Uh, test because when you do the biopsy the biopsy will reveal the Reed Sternberg cells that I mentioned earlier and those Reed Sternberg cells can be seen on a on a on the biopsy uh, clearly there will be these large binucleate cells compared to the regular B cells. So the, the regular B cells will be here and then you'll have a big one uh, among them that is clearly the Reed Sternberg cells. Tough diagnosis but um, you know it, it, usually the, the way it works is uh, you have a patient who has symptoms that cannot be explained uh, with uh, basic testing so they do some more specific uh, in-depth testing uh, which is this one right here, a lymph node biopsy. The treatment of this, uh, because it's a cancer, of course will involve uh, some sort of chemotherapy um, and radiation and sometimes if necessary surgery. And um, the uh, cure rate, uh, fortunately, is a 70 to 80 percent with the combination of chemotherapy and radiation. Just want to finish off with a quick vignette. A 19 year old man, young man, consults a physician about a two centimeter neck mass. The patient has no systemic symptoms at that time. The mass is resected and proves to be a lymph node showing replacement of normal follicles by sheets of mixed populations of cells including histiocytes, lymphocytes, monocytes, plasma cells, and eosinophils. Scattered large binucleate cells are also seen. These cells are positive for CD15 and CD30 on immunohistochemical staining. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, it's a good question. This uh, young man went to see the doctor. He's got a little mass in his neck. They did a, a small surgery, took it out, sent it for biopsy, and the biopsy showed some very interesting findings, the most interesting of which is right there, and we know that is the classic Reed Sternberg cell. Please, if you get a chance, look this up on the internet so you can see an actual photo rather than my uh, diagrams that I drew for you. And of course the answer to this is, well, surprise, surprise, Hodgkin's disease.